Hey guys, so uh, today's video is going to be on IKEA's Symphonisk uh, lamp speaker combination. So I have the Sonos system throughout my house. So if we look over here, you can see in the bedroom here, I've got a, a Sonos Play One speaker. So the Sonos system, if you're not familiar with it, you can go out and check that out. But it's, it's an awesome system where you have all these wireless speakers around your house. You can put them in all the rooms and they're all controlled by an app and then uh, you have music throughout your house whether you're playing it through your phone, tablet, like uh, streaming services like Sirius XM or um, you know Amazon Prime or Pandora or whatever it may be. So you can play your music throughout the house. Um, I also have it connected through uh, this module called the Connect which allows me to play my vinyl records through the house too. So. It's an awesome system, uh, has, a, has a great app with it that you can uh, play throughout the house. So this is a Play One speaker, and these speakers have great uh, sound. They're full, rich, a lot of low end. They sound uh, fantastic, but they sound better when uh, you're in a room and they're in a speaker pair, so you have the left and right channels. Um, the problem is that in the bedroom here, um, you can see I just have these sort of small nightstands and you, you know, I don't have the room on the other side because the stuff I have over there to have both the speaker and the lamp uh, without, you know, things kind of falling off. So IKEA has partnered up with Sonos and they made this lamp called the Symphonisk. The Symphonist is actually their speaker system they have, um, but they basically took uh, an IKEA design lamp and then they put in the um, Sonos One speaker and embedded into it. So this is a true Sonos speaker. They partnered with Sonos, and um, let me turn it off here so you can see it a little better. But it is, um, you know, a table lamp. They only come in this style so far. But you can get it in two different colors. You can get it sort of in this light gray color, or you can get it in a charcoal. And this is like sort of a, a fabric, which is really nice. Um, and this whole middle section right here is obviously the Sonos uh, Play One speaker. So figure this thing is in, embedded inside here. And then um, it has some of the controls down here, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, and so. You know, now you can have, first of all, instead of having to plug two things in, you can do a single outlet if you don't have enough outlets and uh, just one plug. And you have the lamp and the speaker all in one. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you how to uh, set it up and then um, get it hooked up with your system and then uh, see how it sounds. All right, so let's, if we open it up here, it's got some really heavy duty packaging, so it's really nice. And you can see inside here, you've got the base, you've got the globe for the lamp, uh, there's a power cord in here. What's really nice about this is it's it's cloth covered, so it's a nice little little detail on the power cord. Um, and then they also have an Ethernet cable, um, so if you're familiar with the Sonos system, again, um, all the um, speakers can be hooked directly up to Ethernet if you don't want to use the wireless network. I don't have any problem with the wireless network. Uh, there's two options you can do through your Wi-Fi in your house or what they call Sonos Net, which is the speakers just have their own little network by themselves. But um, it does give you a, an Ethernet cable if you did want to do that for some reason. So let's pull these out of the box and then see how you assemble it. Okay, so here's the base. Um, at the bottom of the base here is the attachment for the power cord. This is standard Sonos, this design uh, at an angle like this and it just slides in pretty much like that and you're ready to go. You can see it has the, the Sonos logo on the bottom and everything. Um, and then one thing to note about these lamps, um, oh by the way here's the Ethernet connection in the back if you needed it. Um, but one thing about these lamps that uh, kind of like surprised me when I opened it is it does not take a standard um, bulb base. This is a E12 base which is like the candelabra size base so it takes those smaller bulbs. So you have to get uh, that type of bulb or um, IKEA sells bulbs that go with it. So um, this is the the largest one I could get as far as the, the maximum number of lumens which is 650 which is you know somewhere 
a little less than a uh, 60 watt bulb um, but it's the only one with the E12 base and this is a smart bulb so it'll um, connect to the um, IKEA hub which will then connect to Alexa or Google Assistant um, and I've already set this one this uh, one up over here and it works fine so that's an extra cost that you're gonna have to remember it won't take a standard bulb so um, if you're doing a smart smart bulb you might as well uh, you can get IKEA system but if you're doing a um, um, a regular bulb just an LED or something then you can get anything that has the candle opera E12 base on it the only problem is if you don't have IKEA's uh, bulb uh, excuse me hub system you're gonna have to buy the hub now luckily IKEA's stuff is very inexpensive um, so the hub is like thirty dollars I think so it's not like you know most manufacturers that charge a ton of money so you can buy the hub and you have to get the uh, device and then you also have to get what they call a steering device which is a some type of remote they sell different ones the reason you have to have this is the only way to pair it with the system and without it you can't pair the the bulb itself so they have a sort of a little weird setup but it does work perfectly um, I my hub is all the way downstairs and this you know the bulb that I set up connected right away. I have a lot of the bulbs in the um, kitchen for the under cabinet LED lighting and stuff and they've always worked so their system works fine it's just that uh, that if you're expecting to put a regular bulb in there you can't do that it has to be this the uh, candle opera size so but that's about it and then they give you the uh, the globe here which has sort of four little tabs on it that just go into the slots here and you give it a twist and that's pretty much it so let's uh, put the bulb in and then we'll put it together and and plug it in and then we'll show you how to set it up so just uh, FYI here's what the bulb looks like it's an LED bulb but you see it's got the smaller base on it so that's really the only thing that will kind of fit in there and that's pretty much it okay so here's our lamp we got it plugged in you can see I got a green light flashing here so it's in setup mode um, this knob on the right is just a quick on and off switch for the light that's it so if you want to use it as a regular light you just use a switch if you want to use a you know a smart home setup then you get this smart bulb to put in it so either or so we'll sh right now the smart bulb is not set up we'll show you how to do that but for now we're just we have just a light on and we got our green flashing uh, light here there's three buttons on the bottom here. There's a minus, a plus, and then there's a play pause button in the middle here, which we'll show you how that works. So first we gotta get it set up with our Sono system that we currently have. So what we're gonna do is go to our Sonos app. So in your Sonos app, it'll have a system of all your devices. So you can see right now I have one device already set up. You see it says Master Bedroom Symphonisk. So we got one, uh, speaker inside there and you can see there's a thing that says create stereo pair and all these other settings which um, are part of the Sonos system but all we're gonna do is add a new device to our system here so um, so we're gonna go to our uh, settings and then um, at the if you scroll down there's an add product choice so we're just gonna hit that Connect your speaker to power, which we already done, so we're going to hit continue, and then it's going to search for the speaker. So it's got to wait till it finds it. And this is this is the setup is just like any other. Sonos speaker whether it's the IKEA lamp one or from Sonos themselves so alright so it says it found one speaker it gives you the MAC address here and then set up the speaker so we're gonna set it up and then it says press the buttons on the lamp so there's you press the pause play and the plus sign at the same time this is the same thing as on the uh, regular Sonos setup and what will happen is you'll hear this chime when uh, it finds it so we heard the chime. So now it's connecting. Okay, it connected. Um, and then we're going to hit next. And then it says uh, 
in a new room or a left and right stereo pair in an existing room. So we're going to do the left and right stereo pair since we already have the other one set up. Okay, and so we're going to put it in the master bedroom because that's where it found the other one. You always have to do a Sonos update. This is this never fails. So you just have to uh, say continue. It won't let you do anything until you do the update. You can't skip it. So we'll let this finish. We'll come back. Okay, so it finished its update. Just going to hit continue. Uh, on your left speaker, it says press and release the button it's shown. So it's trying to find out which is your left and which is your right speaker. So let me go press that. All right, and then it'll create the stereo pair once it knows which is the left and which is the right. So they're now paired. You hit next. Um, and then it says, would you like to add another speaker? No. It registers your products. You know, you got to go through all the standard setup stuff on any uh, product that you're always setting up. All right, and then we uh, th then it talks about tuning the speakers. So with TruePlay, so what TruePlay is is um, you're going to use your tablet or your phone, and you have to make sure your microphone's uncovered. And when you hit TruePlay and it starts its process, it's going to like send out these low beat, these low like sort of like waves of sound out of the speakers and you walk around the room with your device and it's kind of mapping your room and optimizing the sound for the acoustics of your particular room. So uh, when you hit begin tuning it says make sure your, your speakers are where you want them in the room and then you're gonna hold your iPad because uh, it knows I'm on an iPad here so you're gonna hold it like that and walk around the room and then it's gonna do a test if it hears me talking, that's going to be too much, and then it'll, uh, it may say it's not quiet enough. But when the room's quiet enough, it'll say continue. And then when you're ready to tune, you'll hit this, and you'll hear this sound, and you'll walk around the room with the iPad. So it's going to be hard to do with uh, the iPad and my camera here, but if you have the Sonos system, it's the same thing as any other Sonos speaker. So that was the tuning sound and then now you can see that it says the true play tuning has been successful. You just hit finish. That's completed. Now your setup is complete and you have your stereo pairs. So if I go to rooms, um, I can go down to the master bedroom. You can see it's right there and I could play through that. I can go to settings and if I go to my system, master bedroom pair. And then you'll have all the standard settings in Sonos. So you've got your two speaker pairs. Um, and then um, you have different uh, options within here. There's an equalizer if you want to set treble, bass, and balance, loudness. So you'll do all those settings for your speaker pair and you'll be set. And that's pretty much it. That's the setup uh, with the Sonos system. So now if I actually go to uh, my rooms and I, uh, I'm going to group everything. Um, let me turn off my that one speaker I had here. Alright, and then we're just going to play Sirius XM. So... We'll just go to, um, well, pick the holiday music here and see what they got going on. And play this. So there it is playing and it sounds fantastic. Because now I got a speaker pair in the room here. Now the controls on the uh, unit itself, obviously this is uh, volume down, volume up, and then pause play. So you can do all those things. If you are playing like your music off your iPad or iPhone and you want to skip a track, then you can press this two times and it'll skip forward. If you press it three times, it'll skip back. So you can pause, skip forward, skip back, and adjust the volume up and down. So, 
got individual controls if you need it. Now we're also going to show you how to add another control that's kind of that should be pretty neat where you can just start your Sonos system without having to open up the actual app itself through these speakers. So we're going to test it out and see how that works. But that's pretty much it. So now I have a single out uh, plug instead of two. I've got the speaker and the lamp, and actually they look really nice. Uh, it fits sort of my mid-century modern furniture here, and then uh, the sound is uh, equal to or better than the regular Play One speakers you get from Sonos. The price of these is actually the same price as a Sonos One speaker from Sonos, so you're actually getting a little more for that price. You're getting the whole lamp with it too. So. All right, so let's show you how to set up the IKEA bulb next, and then we'll uh, go from there. All right, so now that we got the speaker set up, we want to be able to control the smart bulb that's in it. And so there's an IKEA app that um, you know has all your bulbs for your IKEA stuff. So I've got my kitchen stuff here, and then I've got that one nightstand that I'd already set up. So we're going to do another new device, right? And we're going to uh, pair this one also. So. Uh, what you do is, um, you can see there's all my devices there. And there's a choice here for managing lighting. And then there's a plus sign here to let you add a new one. So you can see I have them in two groups right now. They're IKEA cabinets, so this is all the kitchen stuff. And then the nightstand. Um, so you hit the plus sign there. And then you pick what your device is. So it's a bulb in my case. It says make sure it's on. So we're going to do that. This is the sort of the unique or weird thing about the IKEA system is that you have to use what they can uh, call a steering device. So you have to have one of these devices, it, either the dimmer, the remote, the motion sensor, or the on-off switch. It doesn't matter which one. They're about $14 a piece. They're not super expensive. But you have to have one in order to pair it to the, the system and the gateway, which is kind of strange. Um, because if I if I go back, my remote is already paired to my kitchen downstairs. So if I pair it to this remote again, then it's going to also control these at the same time. So you kind of have to get uh, different steering devices if you want to keep them all separate. But for now, uh, just to get it paired and working, um, I'm going to use the remote control one because that's what I have. And then you hit next. And then... All you do is you open up the back of the remote and you hold down this little pairing button and you hold it close to the bulb and then the bulb will sort of pulsate and dim and then uh, this will come up and say it's connecting and then uh, finish out the process. So let me go get that. Alright, so here's the little remote and there's a button in the back once you open it up there that you push down and you just hold it next to the light here. So I'm just going to hold it next to the light. And then the light's dimming and, and brightening, going up and down. Okay, so it says device found. Alright, it says bulb found. Say OK. Actually, Amazon added it right to my system there. Okay, so there's the bulb too. And it, it by default, put it under the IKEA cabinets because that's what this remote is connected to. We're going to move it, and the way you do that is you just simply hold it and drag it up. So we're putting it under the nightstand group. And then we're going to rename it. Nightstand 2. Oops, spelled it wrong. Okay, save that. So now we got the two nightstands under that one device group. So that will be controlled by um, that group. Now even though I was using this as my steering device to pair it, because this device is actually under the IKEA, um, actually I was wrong about that before, this will not control these. You'd have to have the steering device underneath this. You just need it to pair it but you don't have to worry about it uh, now turning these on and off. It's actually separated because the remote is underneath this section, not underneath the, the nightstand. All right, so they're, they're all done now, and that's ready to go. So from the IKEA's app, if I uh, hit the turn off and turn on, um, it'll turn the nightstands on and off. 
okay, as you can see. All right, let me point the camera over here, as you can see, okay. Um, you can also change the color, and, you know, whatever you want of that and the brightness, right? So if you want it 100% or whatever it may be when you're turning it on and off. All right, so now that's the IKEA system, but you want it to work with your smart home system. So what we want to do now is go over to the different systems and then have it work from there. So if I go over to the Amazon system, I'm going to go to my... Uh, group called uh, where is that group bedroom okay that's my regular group that's linked to all my routines and now I got a nightstand one and a nightstand two these are the old lights okay so I need to add on here my new light so I just have to find it in my list Okay, so there is the nightstand uh, two here. Let's save that. Okay, so now that group is part of the bedroom group, those two lamps. So I'm going to go over here real quick. Turn this light on. So I've got the two lights on. I've got this one over here and that one over there. So now I should be able to control it with uh, Amazon's Echo system. Computer, bedroom off. Okay, and they went off, both of them. So now they're connected. Even though this is IKEA's system, it's actually connected with the Amazon. Computer, bedroom on. Okay, you can also dim them. So you can say things like computer, Dim bedroom to 5%. And you can see the lights dimmed now. Computer, bedroom 100%. Okay? And so it all works. So even though you had to use IKEA's bulb because of the, uh, the size of the bulb, um, you can still control it with Amazon system and this will work the same with Google Assistant, um, Google Home. You'll be able to control it the same way because the IKEA hub is linked to those. So, and that's pretty much it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to link up the IKEA control that goes with these speakers. So if I go back to my um, app here under IKEA's app, if I go under um, my devices, you notice there's a new group here that says Manage Sound. So they got, they made a new uh, partition in the app basically for these speakers. And you can create, create your speaker groups and it says Add a New Sound Remote, which is what we're going to do. So let me go grab the remote and we'll start that process. Alright, so this is the uh, Symphonix remote. And so it's just this little device right here. Um, which is just a, a rotating device, right? So that would be for your volume control, and then it, it pushes down. And so you can see on the instructions here, they have a couple different things. If you want to play, pause, you just push once. Skip forward and back is two or three times. It's just like the buttons on the speaker itself, and then, of course, volume. And that's pretty much it. you got to love IKEA's instructions. They don't tell you any words. It's all pictures, but that's the control for it. So in order to use this device, you must have the uh, TradFree gateway, which is obviously what I have because you saw me link the uh, lights to my network, right? But if you don't have that gateway and you just bought the uh, Sonos system, the speakers, just for the speakers because you hooked it up to your Sonos system, then you can't use this remote. Um, so these are little remotes that you can put around different places so that if you just want to start your Sonos system, you can just hit it and the system will start playing. It has a little double-sided tape thing if you want to stick it to the wall or there's a little uh, slot here for screws. And of course then it comes with the battery. So what you have to do is sync it to the gateway. Now they have a little instruction here about holding, taking the back off and holding down that little pairing button again. Um, 
but they do have it in the app here so I think what I'm gonna do first is just see um, what these different things do here so I'm gonna hit find my speakers see if it finds these two speakers and just adds it to the system here so it did find the um, master bedroom Oh, it found actually it found all my Sonos speakers throughout the house. That's interesting. Okay, so it's finding all the speakers all on your Sonos system. And it's added all to the smart home of the IKEA smart home. So now it says, would you like to add a sound remote to control your speakers? So that is what I want to do. So I'm going to hit that. And it says, insert the battery into the sound remote. So you unscrew the cover, insert the battery, and keeping the cover open. So let me go put the battery in. Okay, so we put the battery in here, just took the cover off. Just FYI, it has a super tiny screw. You're going to need a micro screwdriver. If you're not into hobbies or stuff like I am, you might not have one. So just, you won't be able to get the cover off without it. So, And then it says, um, reset the sound remote. by The pairing button is next to the battery, so that's that little thing right here. And press it quickly four times and look for a red light on the sound remote indicating it's been reset. So it says four times. And I got the red light. So it's been reset. And now it says pair the sound remote to the gateway. Hold the sound remote two centimeters away from the gateway and press and hold the pairing button. Okay, so we have got to go downstairs to the gateway. Alright, so here we are at the gateway. It's just this round disc here. And uh, we've got the button here and it says um, hold the, the it two centimeters away and press and hold the pairing button. So this is pretty standard for all IKEA's like stuff. So I'm just going to hold down the pairing button. Okay, and it says device found. And then sound remote found, so I'm going to say OK. And it says, which speaker would like to control with this remote? So this is the really nice part. You can put these, a couple of these around the house, and then connect them to whatever speakers you want. Now, I want to connect them to all the speakers. And this is one of the big problems I've had with the uh, remotely controlling the Sonos system without opening up the app. Um, you can connect Sonos to uh, Amazon's Echo or Google Assistant. The problem is when you give it a command to play, it'll only play on whatever room you happen to be in or that, that, that you have to say the room. You can't say a whole house. They don't have that functionality for some strange reason. This should let me do it because it'll let me pick everything. And then um, when I hit the button, the whole house will play, which is really what I'm after. Um, so a lot of times when I get up in the morning in the, the bathroom, I just want to listen to music, especially on the weekends, and I'd rather have the whole house playing just in one room. And so this hopefully will solve that problem. So what we're going to do is just select all these. Oh, maybe you can't. Okay, it says, which speaker would you like to control? So this this is getting me back to, let me see, tell me more about grouping. Oh, it says a sound remote can be connected to only one speaker. The, the remote's volume and playback will apply to all speakers grouped with that speaker. All right, so basically you have to uh, connect it to one speaker, and then in the Sonos app, when they're all grouped together, they should all play. Uh, but if you lose that grouping, then they won't. So I'll show you what that means. So I guess we'll just pick Master Bedroom here. And so now it says it's connected to the master bedroom. So now if I uh, hit this button, it should work. So let's go upstairs and try it out. All right, so we're back in the Sonos app here. Just, just so you know what they were talking about, these grouping. When you play something through your app, you can group it either everywhere or you can group or you can pick individual rooms that you want to play. So say you only wanted the downstairs to play, you could pick those individual rooms, right? But if you hit the everywhere, that means the entire house will be playing music, whatever you select, which is kind of what I want. Now, as long as this grouping stays intact, then um, when you use this 
remote, supposedly everything will play in the entire house when you push the button. Um, the only issue with this is sometimes when the speakers are, you know, they'll lose their connection for a second or something, what will happen is they'll drop out of the group. And so um, that's really nothing to do with IKEA's system. It's just Sonos in general. So, but anyway, they're all grouped together here. All right, so here I have, uh, I've got the my Sonos app open. So this is just my, you know, one of my playlists here. Here's the, uh, the new uh, remote. So if I just push it, the music starts, and you can see it changed to um, the pause, the play button pitch changed to the pause so that you can switch it back and forth, right? Just like in the app. So if I turn the dial here, you can see the, the volume's moving there. Now I do notice that there's a little bit of a delay, so basically if you turn your dial too far, eventually the app will catch up to it. But it's not quite as crisp as being instantaneous, so when you're uh, turning up your volume or something, you probably should just be careful you don't turn it up too much, otherwise it'll like, you know, slowly keep going up and up and up or down and down and down. But in general, it works. Now the whole house right now is playing, and if I tap it again, the speaker system, the whole house shut down, it's on pause. So this actually works pretty good, it's got just a tiny bit of delay, but um, that's, you know, typical with Sonos system, they, a lot of times the speakers will, because they're connecting to each other, they'll have to uh, catch up, so, you know, five or six will start immediately, and then the rest in the next 30 seconds or so will slowly come on one by one, so... So that's pretty much the same thing. Now, um, when I first pushed it, nothing happened. I looked in the app and there was a big red thing next to the sound remote. The battery was actually dead right out of the package. So that's kind of weird because these are new. They just released this system, but yet the batteries are dead already. So anyway, so be prepared to get a, uh, a 2032 uh, button battery. Have some available just in case. Um, and that's pretty much it. So now I can put these pretty much anywhere I want. I can stick it on the wall here right next to the bed, the bathroom, any any part of the house. You can add as many as you want to and control your Sonos system instantly. And you don't have to um, open up the app, which is the real thing that I'm after. I just want to, you know, a lot of times I'll have the, uh, the station I want or whatever it may be. Now, you can't change the station or do anything with it, but you can change the, um, if I play it here, if you want to move forward or back just by double tapping or triple tapping so if I want to go to the next track um, then it'll move to the next track if I want to go back to the previous track then it's three so that started back at the beginning and then Now it goes back to the previous track. It's like any other program when you, if you, if the track's already through a little bit and you hit back, it just goes back to the beginning. Then you have to hit it again to go back to the previous track. But it does work. So it's got those basic functions: play, pause, forward, back, and then the volume. So it works perfect. And uh, I think this was like fourteen dollars too, or something. So very cheap, um, and you get nice control over your entire. Sono system, not just the IKEA speakers, uh, but you get control over the the entire the system that's in your house. So that's kind of cool. So that's it for uh, setting up the Sonos. So if, actually, if I look on the app here, you can see now I have the sound remote listed here. So it's under the master bedroom. Obviously, link to that one, but. Um, you could take more of these and then link them to other speakers in the house if you wanted to, which is what I'm going to do. Alright, so overall, uh, the Symphonis speaker system is really nice. Uh, first of all, they're Sonos speakers, so they're just as good. They're, they're, you're not losing anything in sound fidelity. Um, price is really good on all the components from IKEA, which is fantastic. The style is really nice. Um, the only thing I think that they could possibly do to make it a little bit better is allow a normal size uh, base bulb to go in there instead of the special um, 
E12 uh, candelabra bases. Uh, that would be nice, so although it doesn't affect it if you buy the IKEA bulbs. but And then the second thing would be um, Sonos now has a both Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa built into their Sonos One speakers. Um, so that would be an additional thing that um, if they added that one little feature, then that would sort of make it one complete unit that has everything in it. You'd have basically three things. You'd have the light, the Sonos speaker system, and the smart assistant all built into one. So just something they could think about for a little bit of improvement, but highly recommended. And you can use these anywhere throughout the house, obviously, where you need a table lamp. Uh, so everything works great. Um, and I do recommend this system. And if you haven't checked out Sonos, go to your Best Buy or one of those places and check it out. And um, once you start with Sonos, I think you'll get addicted to it. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.